Unauthorized opinions expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. <laughs> Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> and it's I was like, yeah, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast sucks it's mental mate it's absolutely mental i'll be honest i thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the loch ness monster political climate and andrew treat yourself okay especially if you start i don't know getting getting in good with homeless people unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com doodly doodly do my <laughs> Come on out and greet the Mets. Actually, it's the Yankees in the World Series. Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com, patreon.com, slash uopod. Smash the like button if you like this, dudes and dudettes. Hey, sometimes I wonder when people are like, this guy's far right, this guy's a fascist, this guy's some sort of bigot, and they click onto the podcast, and they see me singing a song at the start of every podcast, They maybe they start to think, hey, maybe I was a little bit lied to. The wrestling fiasco. Maybe 25,000 views on X. Good numbers. A lot of them because people thought I was some sort of bigot. Maybe I am. But when you click on the podcast, and I'm singing the Pokemon song, or... You know, We Ain't Going Nowhere by Diddy. Do you start to second guess? Or is the Diddy song enough to confirm your biases? Welcome back to the podcast again. And we're going to start this one off with a little bit of a warning from Spotify. I never thought this would come. I thought Spotify was the place where we all went to air our grievances with the world. And given the Joe Rogans and the Dave Chappelle's and all these other podcasts that are on there and how those aren't censored, we didn't think this day would ever come, but we got an enforcement notification from Spotify that looks like this. It says, by manual review, we determined that your content violates Spotify's, Spotify's terms and conditions. Upon review, we have restricted discoverability of the following content for vol violating Spotify's platform rules for inflammatory content. The category, degrading con commentary on gender, sex, and identity, URL to the video. For more information on what content is not allowed, blah, blah, blah. If you're an EU resident, you can appeal the decision by clicking here. We click here, and as we see, we go down to the bottom. Um, options for appealing content decisions may vary by location. So we can't appeal the violation we've had. And what podcast is this referring to? Why it is... The podcast from last week with a volleyball player, an NCAA volleyball player from Nevada, who was chosen not to play against a man on the other team. And apparently this is hateful commentary. I'm not sure where to go from this with Spotify. If they think talking about these topics is hateful or something, you know, it really just proves that you, won't, you just have to be too big to fail. If you're too big to fail, they won't do anything to you. But if they can get away with, you know, censoring smaller podcasts, then they will. And this is not... And notice it was manual re review. Somebody went and reported this. Because they're not automatically detecting hateful content. And I guess some blue hair became aware of it. Tagged it so some other green hair could review it. So I hope they're watching right now. I hope they're proud of silencing people. Whether you agree with it or not, I don't go on, you know, uh, transgender podcast 305 and be like, this is, this is disgusting. Um, they're talking about biology that doesn't exist. The voice automatically becomes that when you become this person who goes and watches things they don't like to report on it. This is disgusting. They don't, they're science deniers. I'm reporting this. And then somebody up at Spotify headquarters is like, this is disgusting. I agree. So that's how that happens. It turns out that X is the only place where you can speak freely anymore. So, of course, we will continue to post to Spotify um, and Google and Apple Podcasts. Although I'm not sure Google even exists. iHeartRadio. But the video format, if you're watching this on Spotify, will also be available on X as per every week. So, obviously... 
what's going to happen now is we're going to have to stop talking about these topics um, if we're going to post on Spotify. And we're just going to have to be more c- careful about what we post about. So having say- said that, I'd like to bring up our next article of Bearded Women Cause Uproar in Spanish Women's Soccer Leagues as Politicians Demand Answers. Um, by the way, we've got an interview with Bianca de la Garza coming in just a few minutes here. We spoke to her about the Bidens and about politics and about what the White House press room overall. Stick around for that in the second half of the show. Or if you're here just to listen to her and not listen to me for some reason, then you could skip to that portion. Don't tell them to skip it, Andrew. What are you doing? So in Spain... There is a B team for a Spanish women's soccer club. The team is called Club Esportiu Europa, and B being the B team, they're out of Barcelona. And they have two women on their team with beards. So let's go ahead. Alex Alciade Lanos and Neil Alcon Labella are the names. So there's been some controversy, even with a politician from Spain saying they are guys on a women's team pretending to be men. And it turns out that is not true. These are actually men, or sorry, (laughs) women with beards. That's the first one. I believe that is um, Alex and Neil, or Neil, I don't know. Also, I mean, you can kind of see the femininity in the eyes. I mean, we could be completely wrong. These could be guys pretending to be girls, pretending to be guys. The dude descri- disguised as another dude playing a different dude. Um, who knows? But I think, you know, in all my years studying these cases, which is, I don't know, two, three years now, you can kind of see right around this area, the lost soul in this. And this is going to sound mean, This, but this is society. This is... Society brainwashing or some sort of issue people are having. And these women are becoming convinced that they they want to be boys. And it's a very sad story, actually, to sit here and think about this idea that there's two girls who, you know, on some level are athletes and want to be soccer players. And they're willing to... Just throw caution to the wind, take these hormones that are dangerous, you know, grow facial hair, never fully uh, look like a man, and just do all the stuff and use all the stuff that's harmful for their body. And you can't say that it's not. I mean, doing steroids for a man is harmful for their body. But I wanted to point out that you can see um, Alex here, which is what they go by now. Um, Less facial hair there. You know, you can, you can see, this is from a couple years ago, December, October 22. You can kind of see it in the works now. And now he's got, or she's got, it's so very confusing, a little bit more facial hair. And in the Daily Mail, if we look at their article, you can see, you know, that's a, a, a frumpy woman's shape. And it sounds mean, but it's actually sad. Like I said, to have these girls... On these hormones, if this is indeed the case, who knows? Maybe it's guys that are lying. Um, it is very sad. And the other thing about it is now that you're on testosterone, you can't play against girls. So you're not going to be good enough to be men if you're if uh, to play against men. If you're on a women's B team, you're not even good enough to play against the other women. Or they're just trying to hide them down there. But you're definitely not going to be good enough to play against the men just because you're on steroids, essentially. So that's where this all becomes a problem is you basically have to give up sports and all this other stuff because you want to look like what a man is. But of course, we can't define what a man or woman is. It's different for everybody, they always say. It's really strange and confusing. And in this point, when it becomes, you know, um, I give less uh, leeway to men because men are supposed to be strong. Men are supposed to, you know... They, they're not they don't need the protection of a of a female so when a man does this it's much more easier to criticize and be like this is ridiculous but when a woman goes to man where there are no physical advantages um, in play in sports it's just sad because you see women that have been in some way or another whether it's brainwashing or just a problem they have within themselves uh, mentally 
where they think this is a good idea and it will not be a good idea because they will not be allowed to play against women. They will have too much testosterone. They'll be stronger and faster and they will not be able to play against men because they won't be good enough. So they will find themselves playing soccer not at all. And Spotify, you can take this down if you want, but I'm an official Blockbuster employee. I have all the information on the new Nintendo 64. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm pretty sure Blockbuster employees are exempt from any censorship. So um, don't forget to return the video. Rewind it before you bring it back, or else there's going to be issues. If you don't rewind the video, you know that's how Blockbuster made like all their money was on late fees, on you being a scumbag. You knew when the videotape had to be back by. You knew you had to rewind it. You had several days to watch it. It was only 90 minutes. You didn't. So instead of bringing it back on time, you thought that, you know, sneaking up to Blockbuster at 8 p.m. at night, the following day when it was due back at 2 or whenever, 10 a.m., you thought if you slipped it in the slot, they would give you a break, and they wouldn't notice. But no, you go back the next day, you have to pay the piper, okay? You can't go around cheating people, and this was a lesson. This is somehow connected to the story, don't worry. You had to pay the lesson, pay the price of your truancy, of your lateness, of your lack of responsibility when you came to back to Blockbuster. Because you didn't know when you walked in the door that you had late fees. In the back of your mind, you're like, I probably have some stuff I forgot about. I was late. I was a piece of shit. You go and you get Godzilla 97. You come up to a guy like me, looking all buff and hot in his Blockbuster uniform. And you say, oh, how's it going? I'll take that pack of popcorn there. Maybe a little bit of flavoring. An impulse buy of a diet soda. And then they say you've got $24 in late fees because you didn't bring back Miracle on 34th Street on time. You didn't bring back UFC 3 on time. And that video game your child rented about a bunch of floating hands, the Japanese game going around being creepy, you also didn't bring that back on time. So in order to be straight with us, you need to pay your late fees. And that was society when we had one. That was responsibility. Now there's garbage in the streets. There's people getting out on bail. There's people pouring over the border. If Blockbuster was around, we'd be a better society. Late fees kept us all in check. That's the lesson here. And Spotify is not going to be happy about our next story either. Call of Duty has a non-binary character, which is something we've all been waiting for, of course. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 Incredibly successful franchise, incredibly um, high selling with the children's, but they've decided we need a non-binary character. The character's name is Volta Rossi. It's an Italian person, and the Italians aren't going to be happy about this. Very sparse eyed, very fugly, tried to masculinize the jaw, but also luscious lips and narrow eyebrows. This is obviously a woman, but the person is non-binary. Now, is this going to hurt the sales probably not this news didn't come out till a couple days i'm guessing the early access of the game because this is what they do now they slide the stuff in the games and they try to hide it they hope you don't find out it's not working for most companies and most games assassin's creed being one concord being another suicide squad being another all these things that they do in these games people find out and it ends up flopping now call of duty treyarch activision they did a great job of hiding it this time, but people are starting to catch wind of it, and I think by the next one, whatever that might be, people are going to be way out ahead of it because this is kind of the second time they've done this. They've done it before. They had a different you know, character that was open-ended. They had a different character called. Let me find that for a second. I mentioned that at Sparside. Um... You know, there is another character who I'm I'm not able to find right now that there was, it was left open-ended. The gender and the, the place of birth for the character was left open-ended for the user to figure out, and they had the options of non-binary, he, him, or, you know, classified, I believe it was. I think I'm going to find her right here. Um, some have argued that the new character is a natural progression from Agent Bell, who appeared in Call of Duty 
Black Ops Cold War from 2020, the character's origin was purposely left open-ended, leaving it for the user to decide their birthplace and gender. For gender options, gamers could select male, female, non-binary, or classified. So that was sort of them leaving it up to you. But now in this one, they're saying, you know, this character, this operator is non-binary. And it's just like, why? And I've seen a couple comments say, you know, why do you care? This old argument, why do you even care? This doesn't affect you. This is a game being published to children and they're being lied to about this sort of stuff. And it doesn't make any sense whenever they put it in the game. The um, Rainbow Six Siege, I believe one of those, they put a person in a wheelchair. <laughs> you're busting into a home, you're trying to rescue a hostage and a person in a wheelchair is, uh, is in there fighting with robots but can't have robotic legs. It makes no sense whenever they do it. It just gets shoehorned in. And the reason why, you can go back to 2016, it was a leaked Google video of a big Google meeting. And they were explaining why that their search results weren't always accurate. And what this was pertaining to was when somebody, an example given was when somebody searches the word CEO in an image search for Google Images. The majority of CEOs are men. But by Google's belief system and belief system like this, they don't want that to be the case as real as it is and as real as it may be in the future. So they decided that their search results should represent the society that they want to see. So their opinion trumps reality is what that means. So in the case of Call of Duty, their opinion is what trumps reality. Do you have any non-binary special agents? Never heard of one. I was in the military, no non-binary people. Oh, how do you know? Oh. Sorry, the JTF2 force. Yeah, you would have heard about a non-binary person, okay? You would have heard about it. You heard about, you know, fat guy eating so much or some guy puking or some guy showing up drunk. You hear about things, okay, in the military. Um, so when you're putting in non-binary people, the Concord game was morbidly obese people with robots with pronouns. Rainbow Six putting in a wheelchair person who has insanely complex robots but can't put the robot legs on themselves. None of it ever makes sense. It's just this is the world as we see it. This is how it should be. You should have transgender people in this. It doesn't have to make sense. And for the one to four people that may or may not identify this and for some reason need to see it in a game, representation matters. It doesn't. It really, really doesn't. Representation of the people matters, but in terms of racial and, you know, gender diversity in something, it doesn't matter. It's whoever's good at something should be there. If that so happens to be the the Wachowski brothers who became the Wachowski sisters, the creators of The Matrix, then so be it. They made the movie. They decided to retcon it and become women. That's up to them. It's still great movies. Except for the new one, and maybe not even the third one. Third one's all right, because it's got the battle, you know, of the robots and the giant mech suits. None of those robots were non-binary. None of the people in the Matrix were non-binary. They went back and said they were, but they weren't. Trust me, I work at Blockbuster. And I mentioned this person was Italian in the video game. And I think we have a lot to learn from Italians. Not the non-binary video game characters, but... If we were to unleash the Italians on society, we would be in a much better place. Can you imagine many of these issues we're facing today being handled by Italians? It would go a much different way. And the reason for that is because Italians are insane. For better or for worse, they're insane. You put a couple Italian Nonas at the border... What are you doing here? Why do you want to come here? No, 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 no. They're not going to allow it. You put a couple Italian fathers or mothers at one of these volleyball games or soccer games or swim meets where a man's trying to get into the change room or play on the same team as their daughter. How do you think that's going to go? How, how do you think sitting there at home, how do you think an Italian mother is going to react to a teenage boy or a 20-year-old boy, man, trying to play on the same team as their daughter. You tell me how that goes, because I know how it goes. I'm around Italians all the time. Do you know what these people do? 
Italians take oil, like olive oil. They put it in a bowl. They put a bunch of bread around it, and they dip the bread in the oil, and they eat it. It's a shared event. They're eating bread soaked in oil, I'd like to point out. This is just one of the insane things that Italians are doing, okay? So, if you're like me, and you're sitting around a bunch of Italians, and they're yelling, and to them this is just talking. To the rest of the world, they're screaming at the top of their lungs. They're just yelling. But to them, they're talking. Sitting there, Thanksgiving, okay? Scenario for you. Ten Italians in a room. Starts off very normal. People are eating. You know, liquor is consumed. Volume start escalating. It gets to the point around 8 p.m. There's a football game blaring on TV. You've got ten Italians yelling at each other. There's two dogs barking. You know, really loudly. Nobody notices. Dogs are are barking. People are talking in the same volume to which dogs are barking. Nobody notices. I've got a headache. I, I don't know where I am at this point. We've got Troy Aikman on television. We've got Italians yelling here. We've got two dogs barking at each other across the room. As loud as can be, nobody notices because this is how loud they talk. You put these people in a city hall meeting. You put these people at a swim meet. None of these problems are going to happen. There's going to be no, they're not going to be able to hear themselves. They're not, when they say I'm a woman, I should be allowed to play on the women's team. There, nobody's going to even hear them. People are going to be yelling. This is how it would work. They'd say, come sit down. They'd give you some bread. You dip it in the oil. They'd give you 10 pounds of pasta. Anytime anything's made, it's got to be 10 pounds and just shoveled onto your plate. There's going to be no discussion of gender equity. You're going to be so full and have a headache from people yelling that you're going to forget that you want to play on a women's team. There's going to be so much stuff happening at the board. The people will be yelling. The border agents, when they're Italians, they'll be yelling at each other. The line will be so cued and so long. The illegal immigrants, the migrants, they're just going to give up. They're just going to say, this isn't worth it. Let's turn back. Let's go to Guadalajara. Let's go to... Ecuador, let's go anywhere where the Italians aren't yelling at each other. It's time to unleash the Italians. It'll work, I promise you. Without further ado, let's get to our conversation with Bianca Lagarza. Um, she came directly into my blockbuster. She said, what can we talk about here? How can I get a free rental? I said, let's talk about Hunter and Joe Biden. Stuff that goes on inside the White House press room. Got a lot of experience in that. You may have saw me on Newsmax on Friday. You may have seen me on Blaze News Tonight on Friday. Everybody wants to bring Blockbuster back. That's what this is about. Blockbuster equals order. That's what it's time to do. It's time to bring back Blockbuster. We bring back a Blockbuster operated by Italians. You may not ever get to rent anything, but at least you'll know why you're wrong. Here's the interview with Bianca De La Garza, patreon.com slash uopod. If you like what you're seeing, help us fight against this now new censorship from Spotify. From Spotify. We used to call it Spotify. We don't anymore. Spotify, Apple Music, X. They call it X. Can't call it Twitter anymore. I like truth. I like truth. Um, I'm rambling now. Like, share, and subscribe. We need your help. Um, Spotify, you know, that's very disappointing. We love them. I think maybe still a little bit, but we're going to need you guys to help support watch on X. See you guys next week. Here's the interview. We love you. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks for joining me, Bianca. The new book is called, and I am reading it off, <laughs> incoming on the front lines of the left's war on truth. Tell me, I, I read a bit about it. Tell me what inspired you to do this because obviously you're doing your thing as a network yeah. anchor and this election's coming up what made you want to do this and of course the timing's on purpose so what about the subject matter as well of the book made you want to come up with it now you know it's funny timing is everything in life as you know and i've actually wanted to write a book for almost nine years um mm -hmm. 
over the course of my career, which has been about almost 30 years in journalism, coming up on 30. So the timing is fortuitous that it's right before the election. But what I didn't know when I embarked on this in the spring is how historic and wild and insane it was going to get. So you can imagine, I'm like, I wanna write a book. I specialize in politics and news and all this stuff. And I have three hours of live coverage every day. Literally, Andrew, I was on top of stories as they were breaking and they were coming into my inbox and I had somebody there I was asking them about. And we were like totally combating like the crazy left narratives every which way in turn. And I just felt like this was incredibly, you know, in, in a strange way, just like meant to be like it came together in a way I could have never told you this. It would have been like, no, that's a movie script. Like none of that's going to happen. Like, come on now. Like, nice try. So it talks about your your experience in media and the bias. And that's some of the stuff that I want to ask you about. Can you think of any particular examples where you were witness to something or you read something that was coming up where you're like, that's really weird because I, I, I've come across that before I got into politics, the bias involved in media and public relations and everything. Was there anything that comes to mind or that you can share that you put in the book of like an obviously okay. strange situation where the bias was out of control? Uh, sure. I mean, I read a little bit about lawfare. At one point, my entire show at noon was a legal show because it was Donald Trump on trial for these bogus Frankenstein charges. But if we back it up even further, it was remember when they graded Mar-a-Lago and it was like classified yeah. documents. And then they're like, Joe Biden has classified documents. Whoa, whoa, this isn't going to be good. <laughs> like he was never the president when he had those documents. So you're kind of learning this together. Man. Well, obviously someone who is a president has the right to classify documents. And then Joe Biden, though, of course, I'm there as Robert Hurst testifying. And during my show, a lot of this is live coverage. And it's like, well, he's old and weak and he has a bad memory, so we can't <laughs> charge him, but he can be president. Like anyone with, a, a you know, an IQ of like 10, like it's a five-year-old could see that that's sort of not, there's two tiers of justice. And we say it all the time, but it really does sort of get to the point where people, I think, have woken up and it was so far past the Rubicon where even like people who at one point were thinking of that maybe media could be trusted now are like, mm, no, you can't fool us anymore. And I'll, I'll also go into my book. One chapter is literally called um, The Cheap Fake. And I remember when it was like, oh, that's a cheap fake. Yeah. That's not really Joe Biden looking lost. Like it was my colleague, James Rosen, who got Karine Jean-Pierre, you know, all, you know, flustered, which isn't hard to do, right? Because she's not great at her <laughs> job ever. And it was like, no, those are cheap fakes. Mm -hmm. It's no, totally not I mean, real. It's just, and it's insulting, right? It's so insulting to Americans. And it's like this contempt they have for us. I feel like is is so great that I work at an outlet like Newsmax, where in like where you work, we can just call it like it is. Mm -hmm. And that was just a, wasn't that only a few weeks before the epic failure of a debate where they're saying this was all fake, and then they come out and say George Clooney's like, oh, he's not the same man anymore, and clearly we can't for America, you must drop out, Mister Biden. Like that was weeks apart from them saying this yeah. is all fake. He didn't fall down the stairs. He didn't fall off a bike and all these different things. I wanted to ask you, I mean, I could talk more about the documents because that's so obvious. He's got them in mm -hmm. Chinatown, Trump saying, at like a university, all these weird places in his garage. And then you- No, you pen where they were funneling tons of money where Joe Biden had a no-show job, which by the way, Blinken was also running. So now Blinken's secretary of state. This is like how twisted and tangled and incestuous, right? Yeah, and then the juxtaposition of that versus Trump, which is behind locked doors with securities, all these different things. And the fact that you mentioned, yeah, the president can just say that's classified now. It's very interesting. But something that I think uh, the Democrats try to point to in terms of them being fair under the law and this not being a prosecution of Trump on political grounds, they point to... Uh, Joe Biden not chart not pardoning Hunter Biden for his I think it's his weapons charges maybe it's his crack smoking alleged of course um what would I mean, you it, he, if she did put it in the book exactly <laughs> I'll just say alleged uh, by uh yes. reaction now just cut to Alex <laughs> Jones's voice it's alleged the Patriots are in control <laughs> that's right um what would you say to 
like a Democrat, uh, a debate against a Democrat where they would say, well, obviously this isn't for political grounds that we're charging cr- Trump or else Joe Biden would have let his son off on these charges if he was corrupt. You know, on the surface, that sounds like a great like left argument because that's what they do. They kind of always just want to go to the surface. And when you start to peel back the layer, as journalists are supposed to do, yet so few today do it, you're like, no, no, no. These two whistleblowers came forward. Remember, if the House and Comer didn't have control of the House, none of this would be happening. And we wouldn't know about any of this because they were uh, their special counsel, David Weiss, who's Delaware guy, you know, totally a long-term friend of the Bidens was never going to bring charges. They were, in fact, let some of the more serious charges with the taxes lapse. But because in 2022, Comer and GOP controls the House, I'm like, we're going to actually start looking at this. And forensic accounting is sort of black and white. Like, it is what it is. It's not like, you know, there's some, like, they, they have millions of dollars being funneled into all of these accounts. So when you see them saying, well, he didn't pardon his son, it's like, no, but they literally did everything to obfuscate and try to stop this from happening. They stonewalled Comer. And one thing that was fascinating is usually if you have these transaction reports at a bank that Biden, uh, Hunter Biden had, like they flagged them from a bank account. So you might be laundering money. This is just like the way it works. Day one, when Biden took over, he made sure that that law was changed. So Congress couldn't just go to the treasury and get those records. Really? Why would That's you do that? Wild wild right so they 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 tried so hard and for so long to you know shield him from everything and those whistleblowers who came forward uh mark lytle um they were just incredible because they said that they were going to search hunter biden's storage unit and they got the 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 ausa actually tipped leslie wolf called his hunter's attorneys and said they're coming tomorrow like and they, they never they never got anything in that storage account. So things were probably damaged and destroyed or who knows what. So they did everything to not have Hunter pay the piper, if you will. So these are very and I think he'll get a slap on the wrist. And I think that they say, well, they won't pardon him, but he could also kind of commute the sentence. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's another way they can. Do, well, we didn't pardon him, but he gets his, his sentence gets commuted. And I don't even think ultimately Hunter going to jail at this point even matters to the American people. It's just the fact that they literally tried to say his laptop was hunt, uh, Russian disinformation when, and days before the election during that debate. A lot of people, I think, Andrew, would have voted differently if they knew all of this and all of these corruption scandals, which now you think about it, it's like, why was he over there doing all this business with Ukraine? What's going on here with all? And it's all the things that they come after Donald Trump for. Hunter could be charged with FARA. Hunter could be charged with taking prostitutes over board, you know, across state borders, all of these crimes. Like who's the womanizer? Who's really doing some crazy, crazy lewd acts? So I guess it's just, you know, at the end of the day, yes, maybe he didn't pardon his son, but I'm not even worried about that. I want to know about all the alleged corruption with China, Ukraine, Romania, and all these countries. And Joe Biden, remember that tape? He was on saying, I told the prosecutor, like he boasted about this stuff. I mean, he's on tape. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of those secret meetings that uh, Joe had with the the oligarchs from those countries that you mentioned. I remember those. And I think there was a study done, or at least some sort of uh, research done on the number of people that said that they would change their vote if they knew about the the laptop. And they, I believe it was 8%. I could be wrong. We'll bring something up immediately through the magic of television. Something else I, I thought of while you were talking was, I'm sure you see some of these people on Twitter who, you know, they're former Donald Trump people, and now they are saying, well, he's not the person you guys think he is, basically being the whole, like, I'm always right. I have a problem with those people, my own problems, but what do you say to those people who say, well, you know, nothing ever happens. Nobody ever goes to jail that the Republicans say, you know, they say that they were, they had a Congress in the House at the same time and nothing ever happens. What do you say to these people? Or do you just think that they're trying to be opportunists? Because I could name them. That would be mean of me. I won't. But there's like three or four people that come to mind that they're just like, listen, guys, I'm above you. I'm, I'm smarter than you in this in this category now. I know Trump's not who you think he is. Let me prove you prove to you that I'm right. What do you say to that sort of reaction? You know, I think sometimes it is, you know, human nature. If people want to have self-preservation. Right. And I do question their motives. What are they doing here? If they were fired by Trump or let go, of course, they have no <laughs> incentive to now want him to be back in the administration. They don't get to keep their jobs. Right. Or if they have a falling out. But that's politics like politics. People go back and forth. It is interesting how some people will allow 
themselves to be sort of used or pawns in the game here to now come out and say, well, we don't, we're against Donald Trump and we once were in the administration. Um, I don't take too much stock in that because I do think that ultimately there's also a ton of people who used to be Democrats who are now coming forward and saying, I'm with Donald Trump, whether it be like a Tulsi Gabbard, whether we see RFK Jr., Elon Musk, I think has been a huge game changer in all of this, because at the end of the day, what really pains me as an American, I think we write about, well, I write about a lot of this is like the things that we hold dear, whether it be obviously our freedoms, freedom of press, um, freedom to raise our children, freedom to have, you know, our lives not be controlled by uh, corporations and governments that have these a uh, demonic, really demonic uh, ideas and ideals. Um, people are looking at this and they're saying no more. Um, so I think when you have somebody like I want smart people in office, I don't want career politicians. I want somebody who's going to be a change leader. I think we need more people who are outsiders. And that is exactly why people who are insiders are like, no, because we've been running this for a long time. And we want to keep it running this way. We want to keep using your tax dollars the way we want to do it. We want to keep using these programs and have bloat and keep spending and spending. Because on the flip side, what does it do to Americans? Well, I'm so worried about being able to afford gas and food and like loving my kid and going to church and actually having like some moral compass. I'm so tired just trying to be on this hamster wheel. What they get you do is you're distracted, you're broke, you're tired. You're not really focused on what they're doing in Washington. But that's why the press comes into play. And that's why my book is such a sharp criticism, because he who holds the mic or she has a duty and a job to ask the questions. People in Midwest can't hold a microphone, go up to a senator and ask the questions. They can't sit in that briefing room every, every day. And I learned that as a very young journalist. Before I was an anchor, I was on the streets for years and covering these. I worked in Albany. I worked when it was George Pataki and uh, I write about this and Betsy McCoy and Hillary Clinton came in and wanted to run for Senate. It is a journalist's duty to ask the questions for the American people, and it has gone lost along the line, and now the media is a propaganda arm for the Democratic Party, and it goes all the way up to the top. I and mean, look what we just saw with CBS, Andrew. CBS News, 60 Minutes. <laughs> yeah, that was, pretty, that was pretty wild. I wonder, having you know stood there in a newsroom where somebody's like editing an interview where they're just, there's got to be a couple people around, unless they're doing it in a dark room, that says... That's fine that we just change this answer for this person. Or somebody gets an email. It reminds me going back to the Podesta emails where they're going they have this back and forth in that with C with CNN saying, This is the questions we want to ask, this is the graphic we want on screen. It would have to be that level of communication to say actually we need to change the answer completely from what it is, because I doubt a regular person would just want to protect Kamal Harris that badly. Maybe they do, maybe I'm naive in that sense, but that's insane. And I wanted to mention that when I asked you about these people that are a little bit flip floppy. You went to people who worked for the the president or possibly the administration. I found that really interesting because I think of people who are influencers who do that. So, okay, you know, there's a lot of people, I guess, that I'm not seeing as well that are doing that and they want you to believe them. And it's almost like, well, were you right six months ago when you told me that I should trust everything you say? or six months after that when you say I should believe everything you say, and it's the opposite. So I kind of have a problem with that positioning, but I think it is a survival tactic uh, for people in the media like that. Now, what would you, who would you say, And because you mentioned Corrine Jean-Pierre, who is your dream press secretary? I would jump right to Tucker Carlson because I think it would be hilarious. Can you think of anybody else who would be, like, it doesn't have to be, like, he's the best or she's the best communicator. I, it's a great question. Um, I think he'd be good. I, I don't think he would do it. I think he no. has a really great platform right now to sort of reach the masses. And after, you know, sort of leaving, being let go, uh, I think he has a really great thing. And I think what he's doing is 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 where we need to be in the vein of things. It would have to be someone, I don't know, who really has to sit and know what is coming at you. Like these people in that room, they're savages. They're disgusting human <laughs> beings who will literally lie and cover up and make things up. And in one part of my book, there was something in the cheap fake chapter and someone said, well, do you think this is Russian disinformation? An actual reporter asked, I'm like, didn't we just go through all of that way back when this is not this? And they tried to do that when Donald Trump first. I'm like, what? These people never learn. What so was that regarding? Do you remember? 
It was regarding, um, it was one of those things where they were asking, it was a, it was a lawfare thing and they would, or they, I, can't, I can't remember the exact thing, but the, the reporter's question was so insane. I was like, are you a plant? You're a plant <laughs> from the Democratic Party. Um, What's because it was obviously yeah, something that, that she didn't have an answer to. So they were like helping her. Mm -hmm. So she is a terrible press secretary. I understand the role of a press secretary. Of course, they're there to represent the administration. But they are not there to actually in, in, cover up in a way that is going to be to the detriment. I mean, you can't be in that job and not love this country and love the people. And, but I guess, I guess if you're working for a president who completely doesn't have those values, yeah, dang, it must be really hard for her to go out there and sell lies. I know for me, if I was working for Donald Trump and I was in that position, it would be it would be a layup. It would be easy because, first of all, I understand the game that these sick people are trying to play with him and the Trump derangement syndrome. I understand that. I've got 30 years of media. So when you hear a question, that's not really a question. A lot of these, these things are just they're setting you up to kind of go with the narrative their network they want in that day. But when you have a president like Donald Trump, it's easy to come out and defend his policies because they're that at the end of the day, they are going to help the American workers are missing in this election. Mm -hmm. He has a record. He, he has a record. People remember. They remember gas that was less than $2. They remember no wars. They remember when migrants weren't, you know, killing innocent little girls who just got out of school. And then this administration is so callous, they won't even apologize. They yeah, remember but that. And we all remember what it was like when we didn't have to wake up and wonder if it was world war three nukes in the headlines like i have to wake up and make sure the world's not blowing up and you know what every morning when i check my inbox some mornings it is <laughs> well i've watched a lot of uh, bomb shelter videos re recently it'll cost you a couple hundred grand if uh, if you want to dig one into the ground uh, <laughs> nuclear that doesn't shelter. work that doesn't, doesn't work, work. You know why tell me so all these elites uh, you know, Gaffigan had a great line last night, the Al Smith series. He's like, are you coastal elites? Are you uh, urban, like, urban elites? I, I loved that. But so everyone who's like really rich, the billionaires who think they're going to have their bunkers, right? Is that what you're saying? Like all yeah. these people are outfitted and they're like, yeah. So what happens is the word gets out that you have that. And then not only are you in there with your family, like zombie apocalypse, they're coming. They know you oh, have the gear. I've they know you have this. the guns. They know you have everything. They know you have whatever, like buku, like bougie, you know, set up with your food and probably your cappuccino maker. Everyone, the word is out. So you're not insulated. And it's like. It's called decoy bunker. You build a second bunker and leave the That's first it. one as a decoy. There's a movie about this. Adrian Grenier from uh, Entourage is in oh, a yeah. movie I've where... Him. I've met him. Yeah. Nice. He's in a good movie, if you haven't seen it, where he ha he's out in the wilderness at his uh, cabin or something, and they have a uh, a storage thing under their, their house, and all the neighbors want to come and, and take what they've got. It's a good movie, surprisingly. Um, it's You know, it's one of those times where you're like, this movie's going to be super liberal, and then it isn't. I love that. What a surprise. Good for Adrian. Well, I don't have enough money to buy a second bunker. I don't even have enough <laughs> for the first bunker. So if that happens, I'll be in the newsroom at the Newsmax studio. That's um, fair. Full disclosure with like our chips and our coffee maker. Also, I don't think the, it would keep the radiation out. Like, can you go outside <laughs> again? That's the that's the next question. Or are you locked into a bunker the rest of your life? All right, Bianca, I think you better I've been... hope you better hope you like who's in there with you. Have you thought about that? I have not thought about that. I'm thinking Bill and Hillary. Um, <laughs> just you could just name off everyone in related to the part the p political party, and it would be a party. Hunter brings the drugs that you're now on because it's 2038. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill and Hillary are just they're going crazy. They're bringing their accents back. Yeah. Um, Barack, <laughs> we won't say what he's doing. Uh, <laughs> you got to uh, put Trump in there. You you do. But the problem becomes, do you want to listen to the the bickering back and forth for the rest of your life? Yeah. I mean, That's a big problem. never a dull moment. No, It'd be exactly. more of like what I just reported on in my book, <laughs> the crazy times we're living in. Chapter nine, zombie apocalypse. Which politicians would you be in a bunker with? Listen, if uh, he's going to survive all these attempted assassinations, give the guy a bunker. Did you like the, uh, that... Uh, what's it called? I guess the 
the event last night, I'll call it the one you just named. I watched Trump's whole set. I'm calling it a set because it was like 30 minutes of stand-up pretty much. I thought Jim Gaffigan was more of a leftist, but he looked like he was having a really good time. Maybe Rogan got to him, I'm thinking. Yeah, I met Jim Gaffigan years ago, too. I always thought he was a talented comic. I didn't know he kind of veered right. I think he's tight with, uh, he's a practicing Catholic. Mm -hmm. So he's done other sets with like Dolan. And so I think he felt very comfortable, which I think as a comedian is like, you know, you know, the room. Um, I thought Gaffigan was funny. He was going into civil war and how he doesn't have a musket. And I thought that was really (laughs) cute. Uh, Trump was hilarious. Trump is funny. I mean, he just has a knack and the delivery and his timing, I thought were really good. And, um, I really thought it was it was a set and it would have missed opportunity for Kamala Harris. But, you know, I do think it would oh, be she would hard have just to been torn apart on abortion. Yeah, their abortion stance is so radical, um, you know, right there with all the Catholics. Yeah. I mean, they've done it before, but they just changed their opinion. Like, No, actually, it's I'm 55 now and I've changed my position since I was 48. Now my whole worldview has changed. Very believable. The last thing I want to ask you, I know you have to go, is Chuck Schumer last night sitting there. He looked like the penguin. He just was missing the monocle, I said. And Trump says he's a good guy. I've known him. He's actually a good guy. And then I'm thinking, like, is Chuck Schumer, at, could he be a good guy, or is he as evil as I think he is? What do you think? He's pretty evil. Yeah, I told you I lived I in Albany, New York. I worked in Albany, New York. I, I covered the first election when he was elected, when this whole sort of dynasty started. Yeah. Mm. There's some stories there. Yeah, it's really like maybe, the New maybe another Patriots book. or something. You the need the Patriots. The, the evil Patriots, basically. Uh, Schumer and the Obamas and everybody. All right, Bianca, I appreciate your time and everything you've uh, given us here. The book is called Incoming. It's available now or soon. I think when this runs, it'll be available. All right. Check it out everywhere. That's Chapters, Indigo, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. How many other places can I name? I don't know. What's another book store I've never heard of? It's everywhere books are sold. It's everywhere books are sold. Keep it easy. It's Blind statement. There you go, babe. Physical copies preferred. Always. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a good day, okay? Turn it up, Jordan.